In the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit, Amen. Mark chapter 1 verse 1 The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. According to King James Version. Here begins the wonderful story of Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, this about message. Archi tu evangelion Jesu Christu eutheo. This is a Greek introduction. Mark introduced us to Jesus in a thanked and powerful way. Jesus Messiah, Son of God. These three statements are controversial to say the least, especially to be said about Carpenter's son from Nazareth. He jumps right in, assuming you have a knowledge of this Jesus to begin with. He doesn't start with nativity and miraculous birth or with his Davidic genealogy. He simply says, Here is a good news about your Savior. The beginning, it is a Greek word, is Arche, which is the same word John used to start his book. In the beginning was the word, John chapter 1 verse 1. The Greek Arche means starting point, foundation or origin. Good news, this is Evangelion in Greek. We get our word evangelist, evangelize, and evangelism. And you can also see the word angel with the word because angels were peers of good news. Gospel comes from the old English God's bill. Or God's tell. The good news here is more than just the story of Jesus. It also includes the oral traditions leading up to Jesus' story and about God's direct intervention into history. Also, this code refers to the first book of Mark, outlining the beginning of the good news story. Of Jesus. The second maybe not never not later. Book would include the good news as a continue in the lives of the apostles. This would explain the rubbed on the controversial ending to Mark. Since verse 2 goes into a prophecy about John the Baptist, it is important to point out that the Hebrew word for good news or bringer of good news was the job of a prophet. A prophet was the bring to bring good news to the people, the words of God. Mark uses this word good news more than any of the other Gospels. He used it eight times compared with Matthew five times, Luke four times, and John not once. Only Paul uses it more in his letters or epistles. Jesus, meaning Yahweh, saves in Greek. Hebrew word be Joshua. Messiah came from Hebrew, Messiah, or anointed one. Greek, Christos, or Christos, Christos, is the same meaning. This is, of course, which is meaning from the Old Testament. The Anointed One was to come to save the Jewish 
and usher in a new age of new sour messy at least that was what the popular belief was that in this time Jesus good news was a little different as we will find out remember that during this time of Mark was writing this both the Jewish who divided who divided and fall of Jerusalem and the Christian martyrdom and the hands of Nero and Romans. We're under extreme stress and we're looking for someone to save them from this church and pain. They were both looking for anointed one, the Messiah, the Christ. The, the anointed one was to be prophet, priest, and king. All three of these positions in Old Testament were anointed with oil when they came into office. This was to symbolize the anointing of the Holy Spirit of which Jesus will soon be as well. In Mark chapter 1 verse 10 Son of God, this is a new verb phrase that in the Old Testament was not taken literally but we all were children of God if you were a Jewish but this spoken literally to the Roman Caesar who called themselves son of God meaning literally son of one of the particular Roman God also common practice in Egypt but this was not the sort of Jewish in the Old Testament. It was Old Testament when they wanted to interpret this. They can't understand at this time. But also Old Testament referred to the Son of God. Not mean Son like Son in human. By marriage, no, but by nature. If love is video, please like, comment, and share, and wait us for our next episode. God bless you all.